Hi guys, Ricky Pope here, and this week on the Christian Nerd Unite podcast, we're joined once again by Colossal Studios. Jason Moody, the creator of Gabriel and the Guardians, writer and showrunner David Cunningham, and production manager and former Disney animator Al Moore. And we'll get to all of that right after this. Hey guys, this is Ashley Cox from Fangirling Over Jesus. At FOJ, we believe in hope and light in the darkness and that you are not alone. We seek to unite and celebrate the intersection of the gospel and our favorite fandoms, and we get to do this through our social media, our podcast devotional, and our cosplay and fashion. And you can find links to all of that through our website, www.fangirlingoverjesus.com, through our social media, at Fangirling Over Jesus, wherever you get your podcasts, and on Etsy. See you online. And lead me on to your kingdom come Surrendering, let your work be done My life I give for the glory of your Son Real quick, I want to share my favorite scripture with you. It's James 1.5. It says, If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask a God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. Uh, I, I love the fact that God says, you can ask for wisdom and he will provide it. I'm in the middle of the quarterly planning meeting for the missions organization I serve with. Please pray that God will lead us to be in step with his plan and that he will give us wisdom as we make major decisions. Because I'm in the middle of these meetings, uh, we're not going to have a long drawn out uh, scripture reading and we're not going to have nerdy news today. We're going to get right into our interview with Jason, David and Al, the creators of Gabriel and the Guardians. Yeah, we 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 had long. We way over. I mean, I, that 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 pilot was like thirty something minutes, and I was like, "Holy cow, we gotta cut this down." Angel was like, "It's good, but it's long." You know, it was like. Um, yeah, and so, we, yeah. so we we worked on that, and then once we got it the way we liked it, um, we submitted it into a process that Angel calls the Guild. Um, and so, what they do is they want you to create what they call a torch, uh, which is basically just your pitch. Uh, and, and, and when you submit that, you're submitting it into a, um, an, an audience space, uh, that, that, uh, what, what, how many, like, they, like, they like said a, there's, there's like a hundred thousand people they said in, in, in the guild yeah, and, like um, and, and think, think of it. I mean, like what I saw, the way I understand it, and I'm, and I think I understand it correctly, but I might not, but the way that I understand it is that it's like an app. That, so like 100,000 people are in this app and new pitches are being shown almost like Netflix. Like you can see like, you know, like a poster of them basically. And then mm -hmm. if you click on it, you can watch the pitch and then you vote on it. And and you there's three questions they ask. They, they ask like the, and, and from, this is from, from the best response to the, to the worst response after you watch a pitch. The best response is, I would be very disappointed if this show was never made. And then, mm -hmm. and, and then the middle one is I would be somewhat disappointed if the show wasn't made. And then like, you know, the, the bad response is I would not be disappointed if the show wasn't made. Right. <laughs> and so you have to, you have to get over a certain threshold on the, I would be very disappointed. You have to, you know, you, mm. I guess they really want people that are like, I would be very disappointed if the show wasn't made. Yeah. So 70%, um, right? Um, no, oh, oh, so for the very disappointed, it was like, it was like you have to get over 40%, have to respond back, very disappointed. We had, I think that our, our, total, our overall positive between very disappointed and somewhat disappointed, the two positives combined was like 83%, I want to say. Yeah. I think oh, wow. Something like that when we, when we ended up finishing, which was like really encouraging for us because we were like, in my mind, it's like Angel Studios, is, you know, they're the studio of the chosen, you know is the chosen going to like this crazy action anime series we literally gave them a, a a torch that had half of the half of the time half of the runtime of the torch was a fight scene yeah. <laughs> and, uh, fight scene between yeah. the, the celestial being and a giant you know yeah. um, and, i mean you know you've you've heard us tell the story it's it's a high concept 
series. Like it's yeah, yeah. It, you know, it's like so we just weren't sure how the angel audience would 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 take it, but they did take it well. Um, and we found out later that there was uh, what five thousand submissions, something like that, yeah. something like that, yeah. Um, and we were one of nine shows mm. that made it through that got a passing grade. Um, yeah. And so, so at that point, Angel got back with us and they said, "Hey, you know, you you you've made it through the guild successfully. We want to announce you at our summit, um, uh, you know, where we we're going to announce all our new shows." Uh, and so, you know, after that, we signed a deal with them, and now we're now we're in. They are our marketing and distribution um, partner. Firm, partner. Yeah. <laughs> but but as I understand, they're not going to be doing any of the production for you. Nope. They're just nope. going to be the marketing. So so all of that is on you. The content, yep. the, the 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 quality, the look, the yep. feel, the the messaging is all going to be on oh, you awesome. guys. Yeah. Yes, awesome. and 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 to and to to clear and to make that more poignant. Um, the cool thing about Angel Studios is that we do have creative freedom. We, yeah. we don't submit scripts to them where they give us like mm -hmm. studio notes or anything like that. We okay. come up with the stories, we create the stories, um, and we, we don't have any, they don't have any creative control over the show at all. Um, mm -hmm. which is, which is really cool because you know, like if you, if you start, like if you learn about like most studio systems, you know, your, your distributor tells you kind of like, oh no, 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 we don't like this script. We want you to rewrite this script. You know, you, you get a lot of notes from yeah. executives, things like that. Um, even if you're, you're seemingly independent, I mean, we, I'm sure like many people that are listening to this have know all the stories about like when, you know, people at Marvel or Disney have creative differences, <laughs> you know, yeah. and they depart the yeah, show. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and to, and to put it in perspective, when I was working with, um, Franklin, they basically told me flat, straight up, they said, look, what's going to happen is we're going to, we're going to get you in a room with, with a streaming service. And they're like, the truth is, is that you're going to have to basically hand over this show. Like you're mm -hmm. going to get, a, you're going to get a nice payday. You're going to get a, you know, a credit. Um, but essentially the creative will then be handled by Netflix, you know, or, mm -hmm. or whoever. And so, um, uh, you know, that just was like, that felt terrible. You know what I mean? And so <laughs> Angel is really a cool, um, a really cool studio that, 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 uh, that is, um, that really is putting a lot of, cre I mean, all of the creative uh, control in the creator's hands. Um, and it really is a cool partnership. I, I highly suggest any creator out there to consider Angel um, because I, I think that they're, they're very, they have the creator's best interest in mind. I think, I think they really do. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Well, yeah. do, do you, do you kind of have a time frame yet? How, how far out do you think you are from from actually launching a first episode, or is that something that's uh, too far out to be known at this point? Yeah, David. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so right now um, we are in pre production. We okay. we are hoping to go into production um, end of the year, beginning of next year. Um, we're, we're still okay. we're still working that out. Um, so like right now to tell you where we're at, we are, we are ramping up our pre-production team. We're ramping up our, our production team. Um, we're getting kind of key artists, key, key managers, key, you know, supervisors in place. Um, like Al said, we're, we're, we're figuring out the, the studio situation, what, what studios, how, you know, like all that kind of stuff, like what, what we're going to need, um, in order to hit the schedule. So we have like a production schedule. We have like a, a budget, um, for getting season one done. Um, and we're hoping, um, like right now, as, as long as things go the way that we think they're going to go, which, you know, sometimes they don't, but as long as they go the way we think, we think they're going to go, um, we're going to, uh, we're, we're hoping to release the show like first quarter of, of 2025. Um, oh, and so that, cool. that, that'd be like releasing like on a, on like a weekly basis, like first episode yeah. comes out, weekly basis. you know, by, by probably like, we're hoping by like spring of, of, of 25. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it is, it's one of those things where, yeah, like when, once we get the first episode down, we'll have a much better idea of exactly when it's going to come out. Once we actually go through mm -hmm. that process of, of completing a, the whole first episode. And so, and just to let you know as well, like we are planning on, we're planning on 13 episodes, 22 minute episodes. So kind of standard half hour episodes. 
And we are going to be on streaming with Angel, but one of the one of the things that we are really pushing, which um, we're not, I'm not seeing a whole lot today, is we are really going to be pushing to get actually on live broadcast TV, not so okay. much in the states, like in the United States here or like North America, um, but really kind of like um, in Asia Pacific, um, South America, where like a lot of TV is still watched on live. Like live TV is still a very big thing. I mean, streaming is very big, obviously. Um, but live TV is still a very big thing, um, many places overseas. And we really want the show to basically be in the places that people love anime. And, you know, Asia Pacific mm -hmm. is 70% of the market. So <laughs> so we, we want to be there. We get, once we get all the pre-production done, I mean, it's just up to Al. Yeah, that's true. It's, it's going to be a whole lot of all your responsibility. Head of production. It's like <laughs> all up what, to yeah, me. What does yeah, that I, process look like? I actually don't know a lot about it. So what is the, like, once the pre-production is done, what does it look like to get it to the finish line? Complicated. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, we're going to go, if you want to start from the earliest phase, once we get out of the boards and we get moving, we're going to go into layout, which is your camera moves. It's going to be mm -hmm. taking what's going on in the boards and translating that for the artists to be able to use. And then from there, we're going to have the animators start animating. And, and animation is an interesting thing, um, you know, in, in – in 2D, because that's what we're doing, it's actually going mm -hmm. to be hand-drawn. Now, we're not using paper anymore because, mm -hmm. you know, you draw on a tablet and it's essentially your paper. And so, um, you know, but it's going to be the traditional, you know, we used to call it in the old days like the three-fingered flip where you just flip in the paper. But it's mm -hmm. going to be like that. They're just drawing each drawing out by hand, and then you got the effects coming in after that. And then from there, once that's all done, uh, simultaneously you have – Jason doing um, color models so that once the once the characters are actually painted, there's a model set up with all of their colors and the way they're supposed to be painted. Those get painted in the system simultaneously from uh, while animation is going on and layout happens. Then from there, we're going to be doing the backgrounds and all the backgrounds have to be created. So we have thumbnails for the backgrounds. We have time of days for the backgrounds, which is going to tell us, you know, each each location what's the time of day for that based on the script. And then we're going to do thumbnails for the artists. So they get an idea of, okay, these are the colors. This is what it's going to look like. This is the, the, the setting, the, the feel for what we want. And then they're going to create that into the actual production backgrounds. Um, so yeah, it's going to be complicated, uh, but, but we'll get it done. <laughs> is done. He, he created uh, Embers and Groove. Yeah. So. My favorite, my favorite. No. <laughs> you know, like someone, you. someone on the, someone on the comments on Facebook said, "Oh, Emperor's New Groove is my favorite too," and I said, and I responded back to that. I said, "Apparently, mine as well." <laughs> I love the piece out. He was, one of the first things he told me was like, "Oh, I, I had, I got off Emperor's New Groove as fast as I could," and I was like, "What?" So I love the piece out. <laughs> Anytime we're having a live conversation, I'm like, "Ow, oh, his favorite! It's his favorite Disney movie." So now I'm moving into he created it. He's the writer. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm the writer. I came up with the story. I, I, I jumped off, was on Tarzan, and was like, never look back. <laughs> yeah, that. I, I mean, there, there's a uh, there's a really interesting documentary about um, Emperor's New Groove. Um, it, it's hard to find, but it's called The Sweat Box. Um, and and super oh. super interesting behind the scenes. If you watch that documentary, you will know why Al wanted to get off that project. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, it was it was a nightmare. It's actually called I think it was called either Kingdom. It had two different names: Kingdom of the Sun, Kingdom yeah. in the Sun. Yeah. And it was, King, it was a nightmare. Sun, right? like that. Kingdom of the Sun, I, I think, yeah. is what they it, they went with before they changed it to Emperor's New Groove. But um, it was such a I mean, I hate to say this because I know a lot of people who worked on it. It was such a disaster in the beginning. And, um, you know, and I was just like, I was like, you know, if you ever pray and at work, I was like, oh, please, Lord, get me off this thing. And um, and then what happened was it got so far behind schedule that Tarzan needed help. And so they they came to the art department and they said, look, we're pulling you guys from um, we're pulling you guys from um, uh, Kingdom of the Sun. And we're going to stick you guys on Tarzan. I was well, like, thank, thank God. Thank God. So, um, yeah. Tarzan was, was phenomenal. It's fantastic to work Tarzan's on. amazing. Um, <laughs> we, do, we do have some... Re so, so the other cool thing about this project is we have some really cool voice talent. That yeah. Very cool. 
Yeah. So, so, yeah. so do you want to share a little bit about that? I know. Um, yeah. Yeah, you know, as of this release, you'll have already announced this. Yep. But uh, yeah. in case some of my audience didn't see your announcement, um, yeah. so who do you have working with it? So it was yeah. So uh, at this point, we will have announced uh, at GalaxyCon uh, Austin that our leads are Johnny Bosch, Johnny Young Bosch, uh, who of uh, you know he was the Black Power Ranger in the Power Rangers movie mm -hmm. uh, back in '95. Uh, and, and on the TV show, uh, and he's the voice of uh, Vash the Stampede from Trigun. He's the voice of Ichigo from Bleach. Uh, he played. Uh, he he was uh, Kaneda in in Akira. Um, he's he's an awesome guy uh, and an awesome awesome voice actor. And he is Gabriel. Uh, and then uh, nice. I don't know if you guys want to tell the other voice actors that we've got. Yeah, we got uh, James Arnold Taylor. Um, he's played. Um, uh, oh my gosh, why did my brain everybody. blank out? He's played Johnny <laughs> Test. Johnny he's Test. played. Yeah, he's played everybody. He's, I think it was was it Lee. I don't want to get your turtle wrong, James. I think it was Leonardo. Oh, he played right? Leonardo. Yeah, he played yeah, Leonardo. Yeah. Um, and of course, been... a minor role as Obi Wan Kenobi in Clone. Yes, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I have been trying for a long time to get him on the show. Oh. So. <laughs> Yeah, we can we can try to make a connection, man. I would yeah. I would love that. He's a very um, very cool guy. Very nice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he was also uh, Titus from uh, uh, that blew me away. Of all the things, I was like, what? You were Titus from Final Fantasy X, man. That's so cool. Um, and then uh, and, and then, then we got one more. Yeah, we also have uh, Matt Lanter, which uh, you know he he voiced uh, Anakin Skywalker. Um, also, yeah. um, in, he was an ultimate Spider-Man and then he's had a, you know, a bunch of live action roles as well. Um, so yeah. Matt actually, I think he does more live action now than he does voice acting. If, if I believe that's what I heard last. Um, but yeah. he is, he's awesome too. So it's, it's really cool to have, uh, James and Matt in particular, um, playing the characters they're playing because, you know, they, they got to, they got to do the whole thing in the Clone Wars together. Um, you know, as, as Obi-Wan and Anakin. And so now they're they're in our series, and it's it, it'd be interesting because they're uh, the characters that the primary characters they're voicing uh, have flipped roles a little bit. So yeah, they're, oh, they're, okay. they're, they're, James Arnold Taylor is playing our villain, and oh, okay. Matt Hamill is playing our primary season one hero, um, aside from Gabriel. So very cool. Yeah. Um. So so how far along are you on scripting? Are you have have you already started? Uh, you know, scripting the series or are, are we just kind of waiting to make sure everything's ready to go ahead? How does that all work? Um, yeah, we are full steam ahead. Um, so we have, uh, we've had uh, one writer's room where we went through, we outlined episodes one through seven. And then those uh, episodes were assigned out to writers. Um, we've got, we've got a, uh, at least we've got first drafts back on all of them um, on episodes one through seven. But then we also like we've got a final draft of episode one and two. We're almost final on three. And then we are in the process uh, right now of uh, storyboarding um, episode one. And so we, we've got a really awesome uh, head of storyboarding, uh, this guy named Chris, um, who um, he's right now he's he's boarding out um, episode one. And he his boards are so cool, man. It, it's just it's <laughs> it's so cool. Like Christopher, uh, like Parker, I, I, look him up. He's his boards are out there. He's all, he's phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. It, it's just it's it's gonna be like the stuff that he creates is just really it's it's awesome. Um, just just visually, like the way that he thinks about story and about like translating the the script onto screen is just it's really really cool. Mm. It, it's actually um, one of the things that was that we we consistently got feedback from when we went over to overseas studios. So like animation studios that have worked on, you know, anime like Lupin the third or Pokemon sun and moon or cat, you know, Netflix shows like Castlevania and masters of the universe. Mm -hmm. And they're looking at our boards and they're like, these are really cool boards. Like these are really, really <laughs> awesome animatics. And they're like, who did this? You know, and we're like, Oh, that's our guy, you know? <laughs> so Very yeah. Nice. Yeah. So yeah. So we're we're moving we're moving full steam ahead. Um, David we've put got, together. I, I'm going to dote on you, David, because you. I don't think you get you gave yourself enough credit. I mean, you put together an awesome writers room, an awesome yeah. team. I mean, a, a team of like six writers from across the country that all came in there and I mean just knocked it out of the park. It was it was amazing to sit in there um, and and just hear these guys 
take this little concept and just blow it up into this amazing world and the, these awesome stories. And they all were, you know, they all were honoring our, our desire to weave in these, you know, um, scriptural themes throughout the episodes. And so mm -hmm. we, it was just this awesome orchestral moment of just watching it all kind of, you know, David there, like this, you know, just the, the conductor. I was like, man, it's amazing. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it was. Thank you. It was, yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was, that was a that was a little bit of a dream come true for me. I, I've, I've been in. I've worked in some development um, when I was a superbook, uh, primarily uh, worked with uh, some some people there, and and it was really fun. So it was really cool to uh, to get to do that that writers room. And we're gonna do it again soon. We're gonna do episodes eight through thirteen. I'm um, I next, it. yeah, like it's like three weeks or something like that. I go. I'm so behind on getting like I I, I haven't like gotten like uh, travel arrangements for those guys. We we do have a place to stay, which is good. They get that set up, but I gotta get like travel arrangements for those guys and everything. I'm so behind on that. Um, but yeah, we're su super excited because um, it, it's just such a cool team, and uh, and, and to, you know, and, and one of the cool things about this show too that, that you know, like and one of the cool things about anime, I would say, or at least a lot of the anime that I watched. Um, is that um, you get like you you get these shows that have like really serious moments and then really funny moments. You know, you see it like in Naruto. You you, you know, you mm -hmm. see it in, in Bleach or even Cowboy Bebop. Um, you know, like the the humor mixed with the very serious, mixed with the drama, mixed with like you know the the awesome fights, and it's just like you get this like roller coaster of a ride. And like that was like one of the things that I was like, yeah, that's what we want the show to be. Like we want it to be like that roller coaster, you know. And um, and so it, it's been it's been super cool, really fun working with that uh, with that team, and I'm excited back in the room and 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 go through the second half of the season because I'm also a big believer, like a really big believer in uh, in story structure and in uh, things like the hero's journey, um, that kind of thing, mm -hmm. and and really like crafting a story that has like an amazing ending. Um, so it was like one of my like my favorite my favorite writer, right? Like. Uh, I should, my favorite living writer, I should say. I mean, he, he's amazing. It's, it's hard to like say like favorite of all time. But anyway, uh, Brandon Sanderson, he's a fantasy oh, yeah. writer. Yeah, you know, yeah. And he, I don't know if you know this, but he's got like this series on YouTube where he has like a, he has a class like that he teaches at BYU on writing fantasy fiction. And like, he just puts the whole class up there for free. I, I, I think I've watched it like a dozen times. <laughs> and like, it's, it's, it's amazing. It's like a 16 week class and the whole thing's free. And um, and it's so cool too because the stuff that he talks about is so applicable to any writer, really. I mean, like you know, there's there's some sometimes he just talks about like kind of like magic systems or something like that, but for the most part, he's just talking about good storytelling. And one of the things that always stuck with me was like how important it is to have a good ending, because you know, like if you have an incredible start to your your story, it's like well, that's really important, you know, for sure. But it's mm -hmm. when you finish the story, it, that's how you remember it. You remember the ending. You know, mm -hmm. you remember like how how that felt at the end. And it's like, and, and it's that what we want is that satisfied feeling. You know, it's like the best stories you leave, you feel satisfied. You you feel like ah, that was worth it. You know, that that was that was something. Something happened. Something significant, and something was surprising. And something you know, and it built to something really cool and something you know. And, and it's just, yeah, so we're, we're really working towards that um, to make something super cool um, for, for season one. And, and really, we've got an outline for um, the first five seasons, which is, is what, we're, what we're hoping for. Um, and it, yeah, that was also another one of those things where if anyone's ever watched the series Lost, um, <laughs> I learned my lesson watching Lost <laughs> that uh, you better know where you're going because you're going to just tick off people if you don't know where you're going. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I mean, Lost is a great example because I think people forget how great that pilot was. Like, oh, it's man. become this thing that people dump on. It was like, oh, you don't want to be like Lost, and it's like, well, actually, in terms of pilots, that may be one of the best pilots ever made. <laughs> so, yeah. but you're right. People don't think about that. They think about how it ended. Right. It just well, lost its way. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, speaking of of story structure and and seasons. Uh, I, I have another question, and this is, I, I don't give away any anything here, but okay. um, is this going to be very episodic in the idea of you can watch this episode, you can watch this episode, it all makes sense beginning to end, or is this going to be a, a continuing story where you really need to watch each episode to get the big picture? Um, and, and I'm thinking of when I when I say that, I'm thinking of 
like a lot of the um, the recent streaming shows, like um, uh, you know, like the the Marvel shows, a lot of the Marvel shows, a lot of the Star Wars shows, m- not all of them, um, most of them. You know, it's it's six or eight episodes. You really need to watch the whole thing for it to make sense. Yeah. Um, but then we have something like Mandalorian, where it's got more episodes, and a lot of the episodes you could watch this episode and it make it stands alone. It doesn't need the rest of the story to make sense. Where are you guys kind of on that? Uh, more in it's it's all one continuous story. More so, okay. e- each each episode does have its own its own thing. Each episode is is like a standalone story. Um, but they're all connected. They all they all build um, from one to the next, um, and uh, and so it's like you know we 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 created season one to very much be like um, like a standalone story basically um, that that kind of leaves the door open for um, you know for for something else basically, um, and that you know that's why we're planning like five seasons right, um, <laughs> but but season one um, you know season one is like every episode. Again, it's yeah, it's it's like it more more connected, I would say, than than just like like one offs, yeah. I, I would say that like you know if you've ever if you've seen Avatar: The Last Airbender, um, that's a great example mm-hmm. of a show that will tell a plot, a, an episode plot, but mm-hmm. the arc spans the season, right? Okay. Yeah. So I think that we've got great plots per episode that kind of complete the plot, uh, but the the arc. You know, there's a story arc that's going across the whole season. Okay. Um, yeah. So, so, that, go, sorry, go ahead, Jason. No, well, that's it. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, yeah. So I, I think some of the episodes um, a little bit are going to be like The Mandalorian where where there's it's a little bit like one-off, but it's still connected to the bigger whole. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah. And Avatar okay. did that. Avatar, Avatar did that great. I mean, even though mm-hmm. even the one-off episodes were awesome, that they it, and th- at some point in that episode, it would connect to the bigger story, and you'd be like, "Oh, okay, there. That that's how. That's where we're. That things yeah, are I, moving in the in the story." In case anyone's wondering, I will say there are no filler episodes. <laughs> There's the, yeah. we're not we're not going to do like you know Dragon Ball Z, <laughs> we're Dragon Ball, be like yeah. fighting for three episodes. You know, yeah. you're you're not going to follow a different character from a whole different show for two episodes. <laughs> oh gosh, you know yeah. the backdoor <laughs> pilot to another show that, that was rough that was rough man. That's so uh, funny. and then the one that actually i i liked it when it happened in boba fett because it was the only episode that i actually was like well, i actually kind of like this episode because <laughs> back to mandalorian yeah <laughs> when they did mandalorian, i was like mm. yeah mandalorian <laughs> two and a half or something like that yeah. yes <laughs> Yeah. Season two. I was going to say the best. I think the best standalone series right now, where each episode is its own thing, has got to be Strange New Worlds. I don't know if you guys watch it, but Strange New Worlds is fantastic. Oh. It's like the original Star Trek. It's all each episode oh, yeah, stands dude. on its own. Mm. Yeah, I haven't awesome. seen that one. Uh, yeah, that's great. What's his name? Uh, Anson, Anson Mount. Mount. Anson Mount. He's, yeah. He's killer is Pike, right? Oh. Yeah. 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 He's. he's, he's Captain Pike from She's the great. the original series. Yeah, 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 Kirk's yeah. Kirk's, uh, Kirk's mentor, right? Like I have to say, I have to say, Ethan Peck as Spock. I at first, you know, I was like, he doesn't look like Spock, you know, but his mannerism, he's he's got Spock down pretty good. I actually met him before. Super nice guy. Super nice guy. Um, so. Well, what have we? Uh, what have we not talked about? Is there is there some particular part of the show or something we haven't brought up so far that you think uh, you know our audience ought to know about this because that'll that'll either get you more excited or or, or help things make a little more sense of the future of this. So I think one of the cool things that we are we are planning on doing we we've got a uh, we've got like a um I don't know, uh, uh, a first, I don't know what you call it. We're uh, like a pilot uh, for this. Um, anyway, we are going to have a manga series um, come out um, okay. for the show. And so we've got right now, we've got some amazing artists. Uh, I, Jason, can we, we can't share our screen on here, can we? <laughs> well, but we can give him the images and he can put it in. Yeah. yeah, I can yeah. Do it. If, you, if you show it, if you send it to me, I can yeah. put it in. I'll do yeah. editing afterwards. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
so we've we've got a manga that we're making. So the the we're making like an we're making an Ashcan right now, which is just like a preview okay. yeah, of yeah, yeah. what the manga is going to be, you know. And um, it's like eighteen pages, like you know. And we've got one page that's actually finished, and it's awesome. It's like it, it's it's so cool. I was I was geeking out because I was like, oh my gosh, like this. We're is hoping so awesome. to. We're hoping to try to get it uh, in uh, the um, free comic book day distribution. Um, oh yeah, that way because the we're gonna, the manga is going to release before the actual show. Will. Um, so yeah, we're hoping for the release of the 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 manga series will start sometime next year, and then the, the anime series will actually. W- will it be this? Will it be the same story? Will it be a prequel kind of story? What's that look like? It, it's so so in traditional like manga anime style like it's going to be following like the same story as the show basically i mean like there there will be some differences because we're kind of like letting the manga artists interpret it like you know kind of like we're going to be giving them the script letting them interpret so it's, it's going to look a little different but if you ever followed like you know like i still read uh one punch man i still read dragon ball super for some reason uh the manga <laughs> you know it's like for the most part, those things follow the show. But what you know is that, like, if you read the manga, they're always way ahead of what the series is, you know. Um, mm-hmm. And then the series, you know, like the a season will come out and it'll get caught up, you know. And then, like, right now, some, sometimes they'll do a thing where it's like the manga actually catches up to the series, you know, like Dragon Ball Super. Right now, they're like covering the events of the mm-hmm. movie. Yeah, well, um, in Dragon Ball Super, the Dragon Ball Super manga, um, like, it has stuff that, that they're not doing in the show, so it has right. entire sagas that. They're not going to animate at all. Yeah, and so and we so we will start off by following like what's going on in season one. Um, but depending on you know like this is like this is more like a business kind of thing. But depending on like how the books do, like mm-hmm. if people are buying the books and they want more, we'll make more. <laughs> you know, so very cool. Well, yeah. The 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 Ashcan though is a prequel. Uh, it's a setup. Yeah. It's set okay. Up. So it's a kind of a before the story story. And, and, yeah, and if you're if you're not a big comic book fan out there, uh, when they say an ash can, usually those are very thin, very small, yeah. usually not full sized yeah. uh, comic books. So uh, if you're not yeah. familiar with that idea, yeah, you got it. That's what it is. Um, like, I was thinking, the other thing that we should maybe just talk about is like. Maybe just a bit of a, a, a log line to the show. Just like, oh, yeah. I don't know that we actually talked about like, what, what is this show about? I mean, outside of like, <laughs> it it's, inspired by, you know, it's inspired by Genesis, you know, it's, we're, we're, we're using some of the themes out of the, out of, out of the Old Testament. But like we said that the show is actually an original fantasy story. So David, do you want to maybe just give a quick yeah. synopsis? Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> um, I was. I'm. I'm like looking for like uh, we've we've got all this stuff written up, and like I I closed everything down for this. So that nothing would make noises, <laughs> you know. So like yeah. when we were doing this, so well, wait, um, why, well, why is that? I I can say that like you know the the world is it, the, the idea is that at one point the war this world called mm-hmm. Ara, which is actually a Hebrew word for Earth. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, but our world, Ara, is uh, you know was created uh, as this place, uh, f- f- and then and then these mortals, the immor- these mortal beings were created and populated the the the, the Ara, uh, and and the center of Ara is a place called Paradem, uh, which was a lush, essentially paradise. Uh, the rest of the world of Ara was wild and waste, a wasteland, uh, unterraformed essentially. Um, and so in, the, this is the back, this is kind of the setup to the show is that when the, the creator of all things created Ara and created this paradise, uh, uh, mortals were invited into the paradise to learn how to cultivate. Um, mm. and, and then they're, they're, they're invited to, co-labor and take paradise out into the rest of the world. And so the, there's a tree in Paradem that's called the tree eternal. And their job was to take the seeds, the eternal seeds and plant more eternal trees all around. And then those trees would create life and create lush paradise, expand paradise, the kingdom of paradise across the entire globe. Um, but they're in their hubris 
and in their desire for knowledge, uh, for the, to take knowledge into their own hands, uh, they lose paradise uh, because basically they bring upon them uh, the curse of the dark hata. Uh, and the dark hata is essentially chaos, and chaos enters into paradigm. And to salvage the tree that basically gives life to the entire planet, mm. Aya has to remove paradise from our mm. uh, leaving it unterraformed, a, a wasteland planet. Um, uh, but he leaves mortals with 12 seeds, uh, and they take those seeds and plant small civilizations. And that's the world that we now exist in is this essentially wasteland planet, but these 12 tribes essentially that have their own tree, uh, you know, a less powerful version of, a, of an eternal tree, but these trees are the source of life for those civilizations. And so that's sort of the, this fantasy, but he obviously very Hebrew inspired setting. Mm -hmm. Very yeah, cool. so, um, and I can, I can give you the log line now. I got this pulled up. <laughs> there you go, the log line. <laughs> um, so it's it's a, a celestial guardian, a young cleric, and a feisty princess form an unlikely bond as they embark on a perilous quest to stop the chaos giants. Battling powerful creatures and uncovering dark secrets while facing personal trials and betrayals, our heroes race against time to stop an impending threat that could shatter their world. Um, so that's that's kind of the setup. It, basically, the, the, in episode one, you get introduced to the three main characters, and they're all in very different places. So, um, and and this is this isn't really spoiling anything because this all happens in episode one. But basically, we meet Gabriel. He's in he is in a paradise kind of realm. We meet Nock. He is not in a paradise kind of realm. He's in he's in Aura. And the first time you meet him, he's actually in chains, getting getting dragged to prison. And then we meet uh, Nemea, uh, the feisty princess, who is actually trying to make a sacrifice to the to the gods, which are the which she like they she thinks that the giants are the gods. She's trying to make mm. a sacrifice to them uh, for something mysterious that we find out later. Yeah. And Very so they, cool. they come. From, they all three of them are come, coming from very different right. philosophies, worldviews, and literal world. Like Gabriel, you know, obviously he's I, not, I would, he's not human. <laughs> yeah, Gabriel's not human. He's a celestial being. But I would say that um, one of the questions that keeps on coming up on the Facebook page and on the Instagram is like, you know, will you know, will this show like is is are you going to have gods and those, you know, is it going to worship angels and, and different things? And it's like, okay, let's look. In the, in the world, just like in Genesis, there are cultures that don't believe in the true God, right? And mm -hmm. in our show, there are cultures that don't believe in the creator of all things. But our main characters, Nock and Gabriel, obviously Gabriel is a guardian that's under the, you know, that he, he's mm -hmm. a guardian of the, of the celestial realm. He, you know, he knows... Aya. He knows the creator of all things, uh, and 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 Nock is part of a tribe that still follow the old ways of the creator. But all the other cultures in this world have forgotten their creator, and so yeah, mm -hmm. they worship fallen beings that are pretending to be gods, and they're worshiping all kinds of different things. And the story really is: what does it look like to to go into a fallen world and take truth take the thing that you know the light you know mm -hmm. for, for knock this character to do the thing that they were originally meant to do which is take the kingdom of paradise the kingdom of goodness into mm -hmm. the world and how does that what how does that change things in a world that is fallen is there redemption for a fallen world those are the those are the things that we want to do in the show so very cool yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, I, I am super excited about this project. Um, cool. uh, you know, I, I've been seeing it everywhere. Um, lots and lots of people keep asking me about it, if I know anything about it. Uh, and I, I really appreciate you all coming on and, and <clears throat> just spending some time with us and letting us know more about it. Um, when we get closer to being able to release, I would love to have you guys back. And uh, just give us, you know, a recap of, of how it's all went, how it all went and uh, when we're going to get to see it for real. 
But yeah, uh, I mean, let me let me say, man, like thank you for yeah. uh, inviting us thank on. You. I really, really appreciate it. I, you're our first podcast, which is very cool. Um, yeah. it's, it's really exciting. It was really exciting for you to invite us, and we're just we're just honestly honored that you uh, wanted us to come on and talk about our show. Yeah, well, thank that's you great. So, much. so yeah. I'm not sure who this is for, but somebody tell me how can people follow you? How can they find out more? How can they keep track of how everything's going? Gabriel and the guardians.com. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Just go. Yeah. Go to Gabriel and the guardians. Yeah, Gabriel and the guardians. Um, I, I think that um, we've got an Instagram page up. We've got yeah. um, there's Twitter. A Twitter. There's an Instagram and there's a Facebook. Yeah. And, yeah, and, and it's all sure. Gabriel and the guardians. If, if you, if yeah. you search, uh, I, I think on any of those Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, if you search Gabriel and the guardians, um, you should find us uh, pretty easy. Um, yep. Honestly, I don't go on social media a whole lot, so I'm not really. <laughs> I'm like, but you should I do. Find you can <laughs> find me. I'll, I'll talk to you. I literally was on a call with somebody that found, like, was commenting on one of the posts, and and he was asking questions, and I was like, "Hey, man, I'll do a Zoom call with you and talk to you about some of this stuff." And he was like, "Really?" I was like, "Yeah," and I got on a Zoom call with him, and we chatted about <laughs> we chatted about the show. Uh, and so, you know, I, I love being social. I, 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 you can talk to me if you want. <laughs> yeah. I was going to awesome. say, Jay, I think Jason and I are following up. I see his comments to yeah. the Facebook side. I follow up when there's questions out there, especially about my love of, um, emperors. In the group. <laughs> my favorite yeah, question. I got to get you a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. But yeah, go to, go to Gabriel That should have uh, the most updated things. And there should be uh, links to all of our socials there. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. Great. Well, and I will put links down in the show notes below for all of that. So uh, everybody can have a quick, easy way to find it. Um, yeah. it, it has been a joy having you all on uh, Jason, Al, David, uh, Absolutely super excited. Thank you so much Thank for being you. on the show. Yeah. Thanks so Our much pleasure. for having us. Thank you. It was great getting to know Jason, David, and Al, and I'm super excited about the Gabriel and the Guardians project. Make sure you click the links down in the show notes below to follow their progress and to support their project. Well, that's all I have for you today. Don't forget to like, subscribe, follow, you know, just click all those buttons down there. That way you can keep up with us anytime we put out new content. You can find all of our social links and links to our YouTube channel and our online store at ChristianNerdsUnite.com. And if you really do enjoy the show and want to help even more, consider becoming a supporter on Patreon. All of our Patreon levels have great benefits and make a huge difference in the ministry we're able to do. Supporters will also get to hear exclusive stories of believers we're serving around the world through our ministry partners. To check it out or to partner with us, go to patreon.com slash Christian Nerds Unite or ChristianNerdsUnite.com and click support in the menu. And don't forget to check out ChristianNerdHQ.com for more great podcasts. Before you go, I do want to leave you with this blessing from Ephesians 3. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. We'll see you next week. Blessings. Hey.